Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following my global journey and my exploration of the world of pens. Now those uh, that watch the channel regularly might remember I did a recent video on a ebonite eyedropper pen, which I really enjoyed. I thought it was a great deal and a great bargain, a great writing instrument that uh, was different than others that I have in my collection. So in doing my study, I came across this auction on eBay. I bought one and it arrived about a month after I bought it, which I think was pretty good. So it came in this package and the mailman rang our doorbell because uh, it needed to be signed for, but the new processes, the uh, mail delivery people do their signature so there's no human contact and we stay six feet apart during the delivery of the package. So lots of labeling, lots of stuff on here. Inside is just a packing slip generated uh, generically from eBay. Nothing handwritten like I got with my other. It was more from the actual producer and this is more like a distributor. This seller just seems to have a lot of vintage including, uh, you know, Parkers, which I think were very popular in India for a long period of time. So it comes in this nice metal box. It's identified as the brand Heritage. I did cut the tape on the box and I left it on one side so it acts like a hinge. And we open it up, we find a nice cleaning cloth, a light microfiber cleaning cloth, and we see the pen. Nice, nicely held in there. You know, the metal box is uh, familiar for some of us that have gotten a lot of uh, Chinese pens in these metal boxes, including <coughs> the uh, amber pens from Pen BBS. So what we have here is a, I would say it's a turned acrylic body and cap. And the blind cap is, feels like it's made out of ebonite and, and the uh, cap finial feels like it's made out of ebonite. You know, we have identification on the clip we have identification on the cap band. You know, not over the top. I mean, overall, it, the pen has a good feel to it. The cap comes off in... Now, yeah, a little bit over two and a quarter turns, and we see a very, very nice nib, which is the other thing that motivated me to get this pen, because it has a medium flex point. And that's, uh, you know, a lot of times these are in fines or extra fines, and that may give you more line variation. But if you're not flexing, then you have a very fine line. So I wanted to try this out as a nice ebonite feed. And also it has an ebonite section, which to me, it feels great in the hand. We have a classic ink window here because it is a piston filler, which I think is the first, at least from my experience with Indian pens. But we'll notice a knob here that might look familiar for us uh, Noodler ink pens friends. I mean, number of Noodler's ink pens that have uh, pistons in them have a knob like this. The ink window is quite useful. You can see that piston go up and down. It moves very nicely. I say it probably has about a 1.2, 1.3 mils based on uh, my feel of the travel of the piston. So I wanted to do just an as received look at this pen. I'm going to obviously spend some time with it. I'm pretty certain I'm going to use Pilot Blue Black in it because I want just a generic type of ink and to, to actually just look at how the nib and feed work versus going to something exotic because you know I'm really tempted to put some uh, of my new pen BBS ink in here. So we'll check back in a couple days and let you know how I've enjoyed this pen. So I mentioned uh, no piston fill Indian pens but I misspoke. <clears throat> Noodlers has been doing piston filling pens out of India for a long time and this Conrad here, the brown and white one, the cow model, as uh, Nathan called it at the Commonwealth Pen Show that I bought it at. It has the same filling system as the Kenwright does. In fact, this knob will screw onto the threads, so these knobs can be interchangeable, but of course they don't work dimensionally. And they both have a 
common ebonite feed, but the Kenrite feed is a little bit modified, and I think that's to hopefully facilitate the ink flow in that flexible nib. So the Kenrite is the one at the top here, and it has a deeper channel, uh, a wider channel, so that should facilitate better ink flow. You know, there's still that hole that's put in there. I think there's a good way of showing the difference between the, that channel. I mean, almost twice the size, which is double the flow, potentially. You know, there are similar other ways. Definitely Indian ebonite feeds. So we're going to reassemble the Kenrite, um, put an ink in it, and see how well that feed works with that flexible medium nib. Let's explore these two caps. You can see there's a nice plastic liner inside the Kenrite and also inside of the Conrad. So that's another trait that they share in common. Here we are comparing the size of the Kenrite pen to the Kiwi Ebonite to a Pelican M800. So definitely the Heritage hold its own against the M800. Uh, the Kiwi pen is just a big pen. Posting becomes a different story. The Kiwi pen is not a pen I would ever post. It's freaking big and long. The Kiwi pen, compared to the CanWrite, the CanWrite does post well. Is a pen I could write with posted. The M800 doesn't post as well in my feel. It doesn't, isn't as balanced as well posted as the Heritage pen is. Let's look at those nibs and sections. All these three nibs are pretty good sized. The 18K M800 nib is certainly um, a dramatic and good looking nib, but the Heritage holds its own two tone. Some nice uh, simplistic design work on there. You know, just enough to make it look pretty. And the Kiwi Pens is that cursive italic, so it's a little bit different. But to me, where this pen really shines is this section is just exemplatory. Great shape, great design, great girth. The Kiwi Pens is a decent second in this comparison here and the M800 is a small section kind of vintage style it has good girth to it but it's certainly on the short side but you know you can hold any of these pretty much anywhere the threads don't bother you and depending upon your writing style I'm certain that if you like a pen with a little girth to it any of these pens will meet that need now we come to that all important how does it write section of the video. Well, I spent some time with this. I've inked it up with uh, Pilot Blue Black. I just wanted a generic ink to test out the writing and the flow without having some ink properties impact that. First impressions is, as I said from the beginning, is this feels like a quality pen. It has some decent weight to it. Here's the weights. And also compared it to the Conrad weight, which is only a few grams less, but doesn't feel as substantial as the Heritage does. You know, fit and finish is nice, but not excellent. So one of the things that you notice is the can write on the cap band doesn't line up with the clip. It's very off center. So there's a reviewer that would find that uh, irritating. You know, the engraving is just nothing special. I enjoy that ebonite finial here, but I'm just not a fan of that design. You know, I'd much rather have it mimic the design of the blind cap rather than kind of looks like that old design of uh, vintage pencils where they used to fit inside of the rotary telephone dial. It's just my uh, thought on it. And the uncapping just 
it has more turns than I think it should. You know, I think a cap should be between one and one and a half, and this is uh, closer to two and a half. But once it's uncapped and you have it in your hand, it feels good. That section is just about perfect for me from a size, a shape. We'll give you those dimensions of the section. There's, you know, you don't feel the threads. You don't feel the step up. You know, this, you can hold it basically wherever you want. With that large number six size nib, that's right in the middle of that section is, is the optimal place for me to hold the pen. And it does post fairly deeply. And it can be written with uh, posted without much change. I mean, you do feel a little bit of the weight balance go towards the end of the pen rather than towards the nib. And it's fairly secure, but not as secure as, as some pens are. But certainly that wouldn't preclude you from posting if you want. So let's put this nib on paper and see what that's like. So hopefully you've heard, this is a very smooth nib. It didn't start out that way. When I first put ink in the pen, it just had a lot of feedback. And it didn't feel smooth, but, you know, kind of like that paper bag thing. After I wrote with it for a while, the nib kind of got broken in. And it's certainly now very smooth. It definitely is not ink starved. That's a very good ink flow there. And you're probably all asking, how does it flex? And it does flex, but it's not as soft as I like. You know, while I've been uh, doing this video, I've also been working on restoring that Waterman's 52 and a vintage pen just has a beautiful soft feel to it and that's not even a flex nib in the 52 but you know this is advertised to be a flex nib and it certainly looks like a flex nib with that long slit and those cutouts but it's just not soft it's not a nail so in the scheme of things it does have a little bit of bounce But not, not as nice as I would have expected. Is it a bad nib? Absolutely not. You know, I think a lot of people talked about the Duraflex nib, and, and there's been a number of steel nibs that have tried this approach in design, and there's been some gold nibs that have tried this approach in design to do in flex. And for those of us that follow vintage, I'm certain we know that <laughs> I don't know of any vintage pens that had to do that. They had a nib that looked regular, except maybe long tines, and it was as soft as butter sometimes. It does lay down a lot of ink like vintage does. You can see this is still drying, and on this Fabriano paper with this Pilot Blue Black, that's not typical. I mean, this ink generally dries pretty quick. So it is a wet writer. So we're going to have to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.3. I think the nib deserves one check. I think the design engineering and build gets one check barely. Let's go into the details. So for design, I think it merits two checks. I mean, it is an interesting looking pen and the only design feature that I'm not excited about is that cap finial. Engineering wise, it gets two checks. Build, it gets two checks. I like the fact that they used ebonite 
seems to be a much more common material in pens that are made in India than uh, pens made other places. You know, ebonite feed, everything is done well. And writing gets two checks. Look again gets two checks. And I think value gets, we're going to give it three checks for value because I've used uh, Aurora pens, which this is supposedly to emulate, but obviously it emulates a Noodler's Conrad just as much, but it has that feel to it that they do. So I think they uh, really accomplish what they needed to accomplish, and that section is just very nice too. So that's how we come up with a 9.3. <laughs> I have mixed feelings on this pen as far as recommending it. I'm going to give it a lukewarm recommendation. Um, I think it accomplishes everything it, it set out to accomplish. Um, it, it's functional, it works. You know, the flex nib is like with most modern steel flex nibs is if you've used vintage and you think this is going to approximate that, then you're not going to be satisfied. Does it write well? Yes, it does. Uh, does it hold a fair amount of ink? Yes, it does. Uh, that ink window is extremely functional uh, to tell you how much ink you have in there. Piston filler works well. I had no trouble drawing up a lot of ink. The cap liner should keep that nib pretty wet. So that's how it goes. This pen also comes in a blue acrylic. Here's what that looks like. I'm certain uh, Doug may uh, get excited about that because it kind of has a galaxy look to it. And that wasn't available when I got the orange one, and I think it may have uh, been my choice if, the, if, if I knew that one was available. And it does have that medium flex nib, the same one that's in here. So my concerns about that this pen becoming unavailable seems to be unfounded. I think this pen has been around for a while and I think it will stay around for a while. So we've come now to the end. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look of a, at another Indian pen. I've done a, a few lately. And they do have some interesting uh, traits to them. Uh, they certainly uh, do warrant you're looking at them. As I do more research, this pen is sold in a number of different locations, Etsy, eBay, Kiwi Pens has them for sale, but unfortunately it looks like a lot are sold out. The other thing is this pen comes in a phenomenal variety of colors, different acrylics for the body and cap, different blind cap and cap finial. So it looks like the pen comes and goes. Uh, to me, if it's a pen you're interested in, I would reach out on the Kiwi, when, Kiwi Pens website and ask them when they might get some in inventory and hopefully they can give you an email and alert you when they show up if you're interested. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you're staying safe and healthy and making the best of the current situation. I think we all need to do our part and do it well hunker down, wait it out. And hopefully you can do that enjoying a pen that you love to write with. Write some letters. I've closed a lot with that suggestion and I will continue to suggest that. That's the end of this video. And this, this pen definitely I think is going to grow on me as I write with it more. That nib is nice, just not what I would call flex. So we're going to say bye for now. Hope you're finding some things to amuse yourself and get through this. And this ink in this pen works well. It can railroad if you push it and write too fast. <laughs>